All right, uh, hi guys. Uh, so this video is kind of a follow-up to uh, the video I did recently about um, the Hutin War, giving the Ottoman order of battle, um, and uh, friends of General Haig, uh, a regular commenter, uh, raised the point of uh, that there were other troops, the Rumelian troops, that would be the Ottoman uh, Balkan province, Greek, Greece, and the Balkans, basically. Um, and uh, so I did some other reading to look at the other sources. Um, I went with the source that I read or translated for you guys uh, because um, Abdul Qadir uh, Tuchelar Effendi is a pretty clear writer, um, you know, and, and doesn't do a lot of editorializing, let's say, pretty matter of fact. Um, but I did take a look at um, a few pages later, and this is kind of a, ma a mistake uh, I made. Um, he does uh, describe later on, uh, a few pages later, uh, that um, at the end, I'll read the Ottoman mostly just for my own fun, but Basilara Belgirad Dan Be Izbornik Be Bosna Sanjak Larindan Haba Le Olmustur, which means um, some from Belgrade, uh, of course, Serbia, of course, Izbornik, which is a place in uh, what's today Bulgaria and Bosnia. Um, some from among those Sanjaks were also appointed. So um, but what Abdul Qadir Efendi here seems to be suggesting is that probably it wasn't that many troops, uh, in addition to the palace troops. Um, and me, yeah, and uh, I think that's so. There's there is a little bit more about what troops were there. Now, what that means, that's always kind of the challenge going over these sources, um, because uh, the Sanjak is like a basically a military district um, governed by a Sanjak Bay, so a Sanjak Lord. Um, you know, would that just be the cavalry, or would, would, by this point, you know, we're talking about the 1620s, so would that be... Um, you know, also include Sekban mercenaries, which definitely would have been in use by, by this point. It's not very clear uh, just by reading that, but at any rate, that's what he says. And then these other sources I have on the screen that I, I also looked at. Uh, this is Gazaname i Halil Pasha. So I also read this, looked at this one. Uh, I think at this time... Uh, Halil Pasha was an, was an admiral. Um, well, I mean, the Ottoman military structure, it, it does, there's no difference really between a sea and a land officer. People cross over and do both. Um, but it doesn't go into the troops or order uh, organized for Hotin. Um, and then the other uh, source here, um, and I'll just zoom in quickly so you guys can see the, um, the publication info. So this is published by the Turkish Historical Association, and you can see the, uh, the editor's name is Aydin. So this is a edited primary source text. Uh, the uh, scholars in Turkey do a lot of these, which is uh, extremely helpful. Uh, and then... But I also looked at, I, I remembered I have this uh, in print, actually, and um, this is another one of these 17th century histories, but uh, he also discusses the Hutin War, but not in kind of the details that I was looking for to, to figure out what kind of troops were there. Um, uh, although, I think, um, based on my preliminary research, my sense is that um, the Ottoman army did not want to pull from um, the provinces and a lot of troops from Romilia 
because it would have left that area open because uh, Abu Qadir Afendi um, also writes that specifically that the troops in Hungary are left to protect the uh, frontier, uh, which would make sense. Uh, you know, this is a lot of these wars in the early modern period were have to do a digression here for a moment, but a lot of these conflicts in the early modern period were definitely like opportunistic, and they had a pretty good understanding of, uh, you know, these these empires and states had a good understanding of okay, when when our enemies at war, you know, that's when we want to attack, so they're tied up on two fronts, uh, and you know they have extensive intelligence networks and things like that to, to figure out when these things are happening, and um, you know, we're, news travels fairly fast. Uh, acts more so than or faster than we may assume so um, you know for example like uh, earlier like in the 16th century you know you can think about the Battle of Mohach when Suleiman invades Hungary uh, that's kind of he, he kind of does that with the understanding that you know the Holy Roman Emperor is tied up in Italy for example you know probably isn't going to use resources to rescue the Hungarians. There's more to it than that, but that's just one example. Uh, but anyway, back to our main discussion. So Hassan Bezadeh um, doesn't go into like the specific troop types, um, but he does discuss the campaign. Um, and then the last source is the Musibet Name, which I think I've mentioned, this is more about the regicide of Osman II, um, which was a tragedy uh, and framed as such in, in later kind of Ottoman historical writing. And, and I, I think I tend to agree that you know, this this kind of, it was a coup. I mean, they, the Janissaries performed a coup because there was a threat that maybe Osman II was going to disband them and raise a new army. It's not clear if that was, uh, to me at least, if that was the case, but um, it uh, it was thought, it was assumed that way, uh, that, that that was, you know, what he was going to do. Uh, and then his Mustafa the Mad, who was Sultan briefly before Osman II, and then he was Sultan again after Osman II uh, was was put on the throne. But I will uh, go to uh, another source, and I'll, I'll look through this one. I, I did highlight some of this. So this is um, from Katib Chelebi, who is a major Ottoman historian of the uh, of this period. Um, scroll up a little bit, because yeah. So this is the publication. And as you can see, I have it in my Zotero uh, program, so you can find this. If you want to teach yourself Ottoman to read this, you know, you can you can find this uh, online. There's all the publication information. Uh, I have seen the print edition of this, and it is very nice. I would like to uh, to buy the, the hard copies eventually, but and as you can see, this is Volume 2. And uh, Katim Chelebi is an interesting character, because uh, he's... Major, he's a historian, of course, because um, he writes this, and he also writes a, a major Ottoman uh, geography book, uh, kind of, I think maybe the first, like, world app, uh, geography. Of course, there was the Piri Reis maps and Piri Reis's uh, treat treatises, but I think Katib Chelebi tried to integrate, like, other information from, like, Europe and things like that. Anyway. Uh, but he goes does go through the uh, Hutin War, so let me scroll down to get to it. Okay, so here we are at Katib Chelebi discussing Sisis Mabadi Seferi Seferi Hutin Desarati Hussein Pasha. So the beginning of the Hutin uh, campaign and the Vizirat of Hussein Pasha. Um, I'm not going to, you know, uh, go through this in detail. I may try to translate this section at some point and uh, and then read it. The Ottoman here doesn't look 
look uh, too challenging. Um, uh, so we have the turning of the Pandi Shah of Islam to to Hilton. Uh, so these are the preparations. Here we have uh, in Adirn, there was a command, um, command, yeah, and basically there was a command issued for Janissaries, and I go because I highlighted some sections in, we have a um, section about the Cossacks, excuse me, um, information in the coming uh, of word from the direction, or from the side, yeah, from, from the Crimean Tatars, basically, but it does get into some groups. Let me get down to the parts I highlighted. Uh, we have discussion of Gabor Betlen, the Transylvanian um, prince fighting against the Habsburgs at this time. Um, The Battle of the Tatars in the in the the Cossack Tabor. Uh, this may be Setsora. Uh, yeah, but I'm not sure right now. Um, and then here here I did so we have uh, so the coming of the army of Islam to Hutin. Um, and so we do have mentions. So there's um, the troops, mentions the troops, uh, an attack upon the servants of Damascus, Shams Damascus, uh, in Syria, of course. Um, and then we have the more discussion about the when the Tatars come, uh, Muhasara i Tabor, so the besieging of the of the Tabor, uh, which is um, which is interesting with the terminology because they use this Tabor for um, pretty consistently with the Cossack because uh, 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 um, Katibi Effendi also uses this uh, terminology which. They don't seem to use as much in the other sources I've read about um, about uh, the the Habsburgs. They usually use like just generic, uh, more now well, more generic terms like ally regiment or uh, the words for army things like that. Um, you know, you always qualify. It's always the infidel army, of course. This is the Ottoman uh, writing, but anyway. Um, so we have the. Yester, I'm talking about, uh, and um, on the bank of the Yester Rib River, first uh, the Diyarbakir, Baylor Bay, also uh, uh, Anatolian, and afterward the Karaman and Sivash, and then afterward the Janissaries, and the Kafalar Spa Spahi, I'm not sure what they're Sipa here. I'm not sure what they're supposed to be. Um, and then the something called the Asker. Um, and so basically, it's describing um, who is present. Um, so the Sham uh, from Damascus and Aleppo. And Aleppo. Uh, the Mutiferica, so there, uh, uh, oh yeah, the, the Damascus and Aleppo troops, and the Mutiferica, who are like a cavalrymen from the palace, uh, but more in like a, it's kind of the, a position given to the sons of palace notables, it's the best way I can explain it. Um, and then we also have a Wallachian lord, um, 
so this is who gives us president present uh and then we also have mention of the um bosnian troops Uh, and then it goes on to describe the battle in uh, more detail, and then as uh, who is doing what at various times. We have again the the Anatolian troops. So while it seems like there are some Rumelian troops present, um, at least just on this early reading, and then we will, oh, and here we also have a mention of the Isvornik uh, from, from Bulgaria, the, those troops. Um, and uh, and even some from, from Hungary eventually do arrive. So that's interesting. And, and some Romelian. So there are Romelian troops that do take part in the campaign. Um, All right, this this video uh, is kind of longer than I is, isn't as concise as I wanted it to be because I kind of went off on some tangents. But um, this is just a preliminary um, kind of research, and I think I'll try to translate um, parts of this, or if I can translate all of it. Uh, as you, and you know, as you can see, there's more mention. I, I've just tried to highlight when certain. Um, troops are mentioned um and uh and then you know i'll, I'll try to reconstruct uh, or you know translate this to reconstruct the ottoman point of view from the battle because this is quite detailed um and fairly easy grammatically to to read by ottoman turkish standards so all right uh well um i hope you I found this video uh, interesting at least um yeah, I, I know this is kind of not like a, a finished product but i i do like to make these videos because i i would i just like to show people you know this is how you kind of do source-based research and you know the answer isn't always uh there right away so Okay, well, um, thank you for watching, and uh, I will uh, talk to you guys in the next video.